Hi, I'm Zach Apt, and I'm running to be the next youth governor of the state of California. California Youth in Government is a YMCA-led program that really works to get the youth involved in politics and civic engagement. Uh, in this program, delegates can run for a number of different elected and applied positions, modeling positions in the state of California, such as Speaker of the Assembly or Lieutenant Governor, but the biggest and most important position is the Youth Governor. California YNG has over 3,000 delegates coming from 100 different delegations all across the state of California, whether it be big cities like Los Angeles or smaller towns and communities from all different parts of the state. Okay, tell me about Zach. Well, I love him. And I want him to be youth governor. And I want to date him. But don't tell him that. Yeah, Zach is, uh, is very good at speaking, and he has a very uh, uh, approachable face. But I think Gideon also has a very approachable face. Gideon is going to win the youth governor because he has a great message. He's a great messenger. He's going to be able to respond to the questions with eloquence and intelligence, and I'm just excited to see him go all the way. Two youth governor candidates. We have Zach Apt. Wow. Wow. And we have Gideon Pardo. Yeah. My name is Gideon Pardo from the Collins and Cat Family YMCA. And I'm running to serve as your 73rd Youth Governor. My name is Zach Apt from the Collins and Cat Family YMCA. Wow. Running with the Poppy Sorry. Party to serve as your 73rd Youth Governor. Hi, I'm Josh Berman. I was a four-year member of Westside Youth and Government. Um, I was an officer for three years, president my senior year. So I knew Zach's older brother, Ben. We went to elementary school together. We did YNG all four years together. Uh, he's a really smart guy, a lot like Zach. Uh, yeah, so, so apt is a one-syllable last name and it just immediately from the very beginning that I knew Ben, everyone called him apt and then that eventually turned into a chanter callback and we just apt and I guess that carried on to Zach. <laughs> I ran Jeremy Becker's campaign uh, for 70th youth governor a couple years ago uh, and Zach if you're watching this um, make clear policy decisions be really liberal <laughs> and uh, speak well and meet as many people as possible. If Gideon, if Gideon says orchid, like, let me, let me that's where my vote's going. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> let me see them again. Let's we'll see him. Let's we'll see him. Let's we'll see him. Oh, wait. I have to go to. Oh. Easily left track. And then. Or C or C or A. Do you think anyone else is running in the box room? Nobody else is running. Do other people know this? I think some people, but we're trying to. There's three conferences. The first two being training and elections, and they take place in Fresno. And the last is the model legislature and court, which takes place in Sacramento. How it works for the youth governor candidates is there's six different parties and candidates run within those parties at the first training and elections, and then the winner of each of those parties moves on to Teeny 2, where three of the six candidates move on, who then move on to Sacramento, where it gets narrowed down to two, and then finally the youth governor. I think it's unfair that Zach Apt is running unopposed in his party and is automatically in the top six, because the other candidates in the other parties have to run against multiple other, other candidates for youth governor, and that that they don't even have a chance to, to leave the, the first section of the um, campaign and that Zach automatically gets to go in the top six. I think that this will make Zach Apt a worse candidate for youth governor. Hey, my name is Zach Apt. I'm running to be your 73rd youth governor from Westside. And my pronouns are he, him. So thank you to Caleb for nominating me. Hold this. What are Mr. Apt and Mr. Pardo's chances? Uh, 
Uh, like zero, probably. Realistically, zero. Hopefully, 50%. I agree. Because there's two of them. Yes, I agree. So, yeah, but hopefully. We're going Fresno. So we're in Fresno, yeah. and uh, in like an hour, we're gonna have joint session. Everyone's gonna be in the big convention hall, and then we're gonna kick off the conference. Yeah. Zach, can I have a picture? Can we get a picture with you? Can I? Thank you so much. Can I get a hug? I'm really excited for you to be our youth governor. I'm so excited. Everyone should vote for him. He's so famous. What are you most looking forward to in this campaign? I'm really looking forward to meeting everyone and talking to as many people as I can. Yeah. And, and if you're if you're if you become youth governor, if you were to be elected, what is your main goal? My main goal is just for is for everyone to feel included and feel like they can speak in the program, no matter uh, who they are, where they come from, and what they believe. Okay. Button up. Button up. No, yeah, yeah. Got button up. No. Oh no, but yeah, he's going, he's going hand over, hold on. So how do, what do you think about the fact that nobody's running against Zach here in Fresno in the first oh, year? I think I would. People know about it. Um, I think that, well, like, I, I think people should run for positions, and I think it would have been great if other people did. I think it gives him a really good opportunity to truly be involved in the party and get the support of everyone to get to know him on a more personal level. You're already farther than what you have Why is nobody else? Why is nobody else running? Look at the draw. Call this Issues and Activism Party Convention session to order. Um, so without further ado, I would like to invite eligible governor candidate Zach Apt to the stage. My name is Zach Apt from the Collins and Katz Family YMCA. Ah! I go by he, him pronouns, and I'm running with the Poppy Party to serve as your 7030s governor. I would like to ask you all a question. What do you think the largest mental health institution in this country is? Many of you probably think that is a large hospital somewhere, but in reality, it is the Los Angeles County Jail. Thank you. My name is Zach Apt from the Collins and Katz Family Y. Ready to serve as your 7030s governor. We will now move on to a discussion with the candidate. The executive team has written some questions which um, Charlotte, our Deputy Chief of Staff, will ask the candidate. What is your opinion on cats? <laughs> so personally, I have a cat. What'd you end with? What was the ending? I'm, I'm, I'm Zach Abbott. <laughs> well, oh, more than that. Like Hamilton like Baseball, Kike really? Hernandez. Aww. If you're okay, if you're okay. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. Thank you. Zach is looking very cute. You know what I'm and, uh, Gideon's a smart guy. Gideon's really smart. So I don't know. I don't know who's going to win. But I hope the best for all of them. Welcome, everyone, to the first avocado party session of the year. For those of you who are new to our party, welcome. And for those of you who are returning, we're glad to have you back. In our party sessions at this conference, we will be choosing our candidate for 73rd Youth Governor and learning more about what our identity will be as a party this year. Will the candidates for Youth Governor and the Avocado Party please step forward? From the Collins and Katz family, YMCA, Gideon Party. From the East Valley Family YMCA Stock City. We 
you don't, they're, they, they don't need to be this expensive to serve as your next totally tubular youth governor. Okay, and gentrification begins. As it stands, our education system is built from one type of student and one type of student alone. So you have a pounding headache and a hundred degree fever. Hundred and three degrees, actually. My name is Gideon Pardo from the Collins and Cass Family YMCA. You know, what? I'm running to serve as your 73rd governor. In many ways, our generation's fate has already been decided by a government that none of us had a say in choosing. I see so many people struggling. So many people looking for help and finding it nowhere. Please give another big round of applause for all How's, your, how's the day? How's the day? Uh, pretty good. Day one. T and E one. Um, I thought that it was really rough though because all the speeches were really long and I didn't have enough focus. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my youth governor candidates were absolute trash. Um, there were six of them and they were all trash for the most part. Do you know um, any of their names? What party are you in? Redwood. One of them was freaking. What's his name? He was running around today. Lauer. Lauer. Yeah. Lauer, yeah. He Lauer. should be disqualified. Lauer. Lauer. Yeah. No. No. So what happened was this is actually kind of this is actually kind of funny. Posters. Yeah. Okay, this is yes. actually kind of funny. So good. we were in the Redwood meeting, and we were all like getting ready. We were all sitting down, and obviously then like none of us cared because like none of our none of our West Side candidates are in Redwood, so. Ron, we saw like Lauer, this Lauer guy, like running around with his signs, and since you're not supposed to, so Ryan Bronte went up to the the party chair of Redwood and told her that he was doing this, and she said that they were going to disqualify him. Yeah, they should because a after um, they were still holding his signs, yeah, I thought. and then Shane's like, "What are you running for?" He's like, "Youth governor," and I go, "Yeah, you can't do that. You can't make posters," and I walked away. So you were wondering, like, um, if it's weird that I'm the only candidate when other parties have, like, 11 candidates. And I'd say, yeah, and of course, I, I legitimately wish that I was running against someone because I think that, in general, having conversations and having multiple candidates is a good thing. But I think that this just gives me an opportunity to really talk to the party and see what they like and what they're passionate about so I can best incorporate into my platform going forward and just be the best representation of the party that I can. That's really my goal. And I, I think that that's the best way I can go about it. I think that delegation is obviously a big thing, and I think it really puts small delegations at a disadvantage. And I hope that in the future debates and elections and upcoming, that you get multiple votes so that you can really vote for someone that you align with along with your candidate. Because I, I just think that we should be including all delegations, and I think that that gives a kind of unfair advantage. Do you think that Gideon? It will be sad if Gideon loses. I'll be sad. I'll be really sad. I think Gideon's a great candidate and he's a good guy. I hope he wins. I think the Whoa. biggest advantage is that he's cute and then and only one Whoa. of the other. I think well, only one of the other candidates is cute. And that's uh, but uh, something else that's an advantage that he created himself is that he um, is that he's such a nice guy. So.
who will be our officer for the 2019-2020 year. 2019-2020 Vice President is Jack Abrams. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. So I, I wasn't able to go to any party sessions to watch any ca candidates. Um, I do know Zach Apt is um, automatically going through. Uh, he seems like a pretty cool guy. Uh, he's only pop party candidate. I'm pretty sure someone from Westside and Gerard. <laughs> Uh, so, I spoke last night at my party. I think it went well. Um, I gave my speech the way I wanted to give it, and uh, I answered the questions in the way that I wanted to answer them, so I feel good. And, um, yeah, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Uh, who do you think is your biggest competition? Uh, probably Maddie Stein. Who do you think your biggest competitor is in the other I party? definitely say Gideon. Um, I've been talking campaign to a lot of people, and a lot of them say either Maddie Stein or Gideon. So. Um, I think I definitely did present myself well and I'm hoping it turns out well because I have so much passion for this program and I've been in it for so long and it really is my dream to be your 73rd governor. Um, trout debates were awesome as they always are because uh, Trout is the best party. Trout um, Miles is an incredible speaker. I think he's great at um, getting Trout Party uh, really excited and invigorated which is what the party embodies. Like They love really being involved. They love getting behind someone. I think Miles able that Miles is able to do that very well. So yeah, the thing about the Trout Party is um, misrepresentation. People who are in the Trout Party tend to love it. It's the one party where people are actually um, proud to be in. People take pride in the fact that they're in the Trout Party, that they're different from other parties because it seems like the identity of a lot of other parties blend together. They're seen who do you think are, I'll start with the boldest first. I think Poppy, I think I'm gonna win. Okay, yeah, of but, course. Uh, that's a little bold. Um, okay, who else? I'm not going to say avocado because I don't want to be mean, but uh, Grizzly, I don't know. I think Redwood and Moro, so that's what I've been hearing. And then uh, Trout, I've heard Miles Stein. And then um, Gold, oh, Thomas, for sure. Who's Tom? Thomas, sure. And Avocado? Uh, I'm not going to say. Gideon or Maddie? And um, I would make a point out of just trying to force my beliefs onto everybody. And I just want to say that I understand why conservatives think the way they do. I'll open discussions with other people, other ideologies. So, like, just a round of applause for all of you guys who are here. Yeah, that's good. All right. That was yes. What session? Are you guys in the show? Shane. 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 Thank you to everyone who's talked to me and supported me throughout this weekend, but onto the carbon tax. So I think the carbon tax is a really effective way to hold businesses and corporations who for so many years have been polluting our environment and causing the extreme damage that we see today to our environment. They have pushed us to the brink of a climate disaster. Governor Aiden Blake here today. Basically, I came here because I'm explaining to you one thing that I'm really excited for this year, which is Legislative Day. As many of you know who followed my campaign last year, that was the biggest thing I was campaigning for. I wanted our bills from youth and government to have an opportunity to get heard by actual state legislators, and this year is actually going to happen, which is awesome. You're writing something on a post-it note that you're vulnerable. I have lice. Uh, I cried at the end of Toy Story 4. There's this one girl I met. Um, I think I'm in love with her. She's just so beautiful. She knows who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. I love you. The opinion of this chair is that we go with the carbon tax. Walked out looking like money. Bitch, I use my trap phone. Walked out looking like money, money. Look what I got on. Bitch, I 
wish I knew what I got on. Who are you voting for? Gideon, Gideon, no question. You. I don't know her. Name. I have to vote for um, Zach Abbs. My party, I have to vote for Thomas. Anyone? Uh, Gideon. What's his name? Maya? I voted for the he weakest guy. Uh, AJ. Uh, Gideon Pardo. Who did you vote for? Zach Abbs. Zach Abbs. Who did you just vote for? <laughs> Let's go. I'm not sure. Andre. I voted for Gideon. Um, okay. Thomas. Okay. Thomas. YMCA. Westside. Collins and Cats. Okay, we can do so much better. To the SD side. W E to the S. So we all know Zach is in the top six for youth governor. So it's really important that we all show a lot of spirit as West Side as a delegation, and also for Zach and whoever makes it tomorrow. Um, so we're really gonna push for the app thing. Um, Whatever you're talking about. Uh, oh, first, um, I want to congratulate Ryan Lee and Matthew Pardo. They got the point. Oh, 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 that is so weird. Okay, do you guys think Gideon's do you think Gideon's gonna beat out uh, Maddie and Stein? I wasn't in the party, so I think I think it's possible. He's really gonna know Yeah. No, Maddie's a good speaker, but Gideon uh, is a good speaker and he's good on the issues. I agree with uh previous previously stated. Do you think that? No, it's just for fishies. Uh, just because I like fishies. I think we have some great camera stuff. So. You know, uh, I'm feeling good. Um, you know, I think it's I could win, I could not win, but uh, either way, I'm proud of the campaign I ran, um, and I think this has been a good weekend, uh, and uh, it's good to be going home. Yeah. <laughs>
two elected candidates at Teeny 2 We have Zach and Max. And if we want them to win, we are going to have to show so much more spirit for them. There must be some West Side Delegation. We are the West Side Delegation. We are the West Side Delegation. We're going to pass some bills to keep doing this until everyone participates. Yeah. are like, uh, caucuses is like kind of conservative, it's not conservative inherently, but like by empowering caucuses that's like CDC. Um, I don't know. Yes. I want to do can FaceTime or oh, present a like, video. Um, <laughs> hey guys, I'm Zach and, <laughs> um, and I'm running for governor. So I'll, I'll give you guys like a brief overview about my platform, but before I do that, I just want to thank you guys for, I don't know, two weeks ago? Yeah, I think it was two weeks ago. Like, I appreciate all the support and people just coming up and talking to me. And it's really helpful. So for my platform, it's basically three things. You can come up to me and talk to me if you have any other ideas. Um, but the first one is using less paper and plastic in the program. Um, the second one is um, making form more included in the general program. And then the last one is uh, to expand caucuses and make them more powerful. We're working on a video, if anyone has any ideas. Oh, that's so Hi everyone, I'm Ezra Flappenfrag from the West Side Delegation and you're watching Hot Ones. The show with hot questions and even hotter wings. Today, we're joined by Zach Apt, youth governor candidate from the Poppy Party, who goes to Hamilton High School. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Celebrity One celebrity crush, probably Gal Gadot. She's Israeli, and she's Jewish. Oh, oh. oh sh Give me a second. Is there more milk? Can I actually have a second, though? Like, I'm not even kidding. Where's the ice? My throat was... Alright. So we just had our, our last meeting before Teeny 2 last night and... Um, I'm Zach and I'm running for youth governor. Um, I don't have any posters unfortunately. I'm not allowed to make posters. But pretty much just what Max said um, it's really helpful when you guys campaign and talk to people, but just keep it up, guys. I really appreciate it, and I think we got this. And now we're going home to my house, and we're going to practice some debate questions and practice my speech. This Teeny 2 is on Saturday. Like when, <laughs> or like, who do, who do you think the top three are going to be going to talk? Like, to right, so myself. Um, I'm going to say... Thomas and Emma. No, Maddie. Uh, that's the implication, is it not? Emma so, Bros. A new video. Uh, she has a, a meme page that is vaguely reminiscent of the Zach Cat Fan Club. I was just reflecting on that fact that I, I was getting some uh, some similar vibes. Hey guys, we're working on Zach's campaign right now. Yeah. Let's watch this video. Yeah, it looks awesome. It looks really good. I'm no. I am so excited. Does everybody want to watch this video? <laughs> Spill your guts. Who's Emma's video. She's, Emma who? Who's also running for you? Oh, shit, my vote. Emma Robosa? <laughs> oh, I don't know how to pronounce her name, sorry. App is way easier than it. Oh. 
Uh, they really copied our videos. We're here with Emma Barossa. Emma, of course, has a chance to either eat one of these absolutely disgusting items. Their editing might be worse than ours. They can. That's fire. Does she not eat it? No, if she answers the question, she doesn't eat it. She does? She doesn't eat uh, it. That's the whole point. Sardines are things that people eat all That's also not a bad question. Like, yeah, that's like, why would you know? Which one would it be? Come on, Barossa. Yes. Have you ever pooped your pants? You know why, NG? I'm gonna be honest here. Yes. <laughs> Why is she? That's not. I don't want to vote her. How he should yeah. sit. Yeah. They said that my hand, my hand positions haven't been good. So. I told him like it can't they be. Said that this is awkward. Is this awkward? Because it can't be. He was crying. You're not gonna be out. I can and see. You're <laughs> like, normally, like normally I would say like oh whatever's sit, natural. Sit like this. No, that, I had to tell him that because I was like oh what's up, whatever's natural for you, but what's natural for you is not like what's normal this for. This is what I did. That is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just okay. The problem is the legs. The yeah. le no. I think that's okay. Okay, that's fine. It's okay. 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 I just got right, I'm gonna pick up our last left off. Our like we were under the impression that um Zach would give a speech at joint session, and when he did the speech, there would be like everyone would give a speech, all six candidates, and then there'd be questions to follow. Right, we right. discovered that they're on the schedule. They have a debate, like a one-hour debate, for all the candidates to go to. And like that, and that's mandatory for all delegates to go to. So it's another speaking opportunity in front of all three thousand delegates. Well, no, what we found yesterday with Zach was that he's a lot. Or this is what I heard from Liza after I left. He's a lot better at um, like the policy questions and like the social issues. Is where he needs work. Policy. So, it's. I mean, social people will get more offended because it's more personal. It's just like very yeah. specific, and also there's so many things to say. Do you think sex work should be decriminalized? Is that a social issue? Uh, I think that the first thing that I, I can't sit, I'm not flexible enough. Like. Crisscross, that's <laughs> awesome. Could you summarize your platform in a single sentence? Oof, that's um, if I had to summarize in a single sentence, it would be the environment, forum, and congress. It's not a virus. <laughs> dude, you're level 10, Zach? That's, dude, look how much money he's getting. Yeah, he's a D list celebrity. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, I played that in middle school. Dude, Ray Powers. Remember that? Remember we used to play that last time? Who? Who was recorded as a friend? Okay. I was fired. What am I supposed to do? I forgot to do this game. Fire was really good. Did you guys all play? Oh, Zach's hot. I was hot. Cute outfit. So we woke up and forgot to eat breakfast. Forgot to eat breakfast. Talk about Zach. Do you like Zach? It's a bit weird, but yeah. Um, oh, look, look. Stir a cesspit and a foul stench arises. Stir perfume and a de delightful fragrance assists. But the movement is identical. Where's Ezra? She, really, she wants to make it her platform, so make sure you're like, you make a point about you wearing green. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh everyone, all the ladies. You heard it here, Zach. Gather around. Right. right now, uh, right are. now, Zach has a 16.7% chance of becoming the next youth governor. After the, right now, he has a 50% chance of making it to the top three. I think the odds are good. We have a big delegation, um, and he's kind of cute. So. That's at the that's debate. The yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's such a mess. <laughs> it's so confusing. Yeah. I'm got this. I'm ready. The presidential. Here we go. I literally did it without looking. It's nice though. It's nice. I like it. Okay. Is it good? Wait, what? <laughs> Money shot. Money shot. Stop. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go. 
what party are you in? I'm in, I'm in Shaw, but I love coffee. Uh, I'm good. Uh, we respect all parties. Yeah. yeah. We what love all parties. Huh? We love all the parties. All the, par all the parties are just amazing. Yeah, yeah I know. Like I That's so, all true. I want to get to know everything. Um, Definitely, I think Tommy Schramm's gonna win. Hello, uh, my name's Willem van Alsselt. I'm a delegate from the West Side. <laughs> oh, I think Sochi will definitely win. Like, I, I, she has the best chance. That's the homie. Okay, we have the homie veg. Jack, we should head over in 10 minutes. All right, okay, I'll probably do my speech three times and then me and Ezra will walk around for the rest. Sounds good. Can I, oh, no, I when I talk to kids who aren't in YG, I think a lot of people don't understand, like, the scale of the whole program and how big of a deal it is for us to have a candidate in the top six and how big of it is, a, a big of a deal it is for Zach to be in the top six. He's governor. He's about to speak in front of almost 4,000 people, um, talk about himself and like convince these people like that they want him to be the leader of all of them for next year. It's, like I, I think it's pretty substantial. He's like he's literally about to speak in front of 4,000 people. He's, like. speech uh, to joint session. Yeah. I would like now to invite our 73rd youth governor candidates to deliver a brief statement. Youth and government, my name is Andre Merzion from the Crescenta Valley YMCA. What if you were told five times a day that you were going to die? these questions, find some answers, and remind yourselves five times a day that you can depend on Andre. Hello, YMG. My name is Emma Barosa from Epic SGV. My entire goal of this campaign is not about me. It's about inspiring each and every one of you to currently live the change. The Redwood Party to serve as your next 7030th governor. Thank you all so much. Just like making fun of and everything. Crap, that makes sense. 
chocolate up poppy party session. And then, you know, some icebreakers. And then I ate. And then we're gonna um, have a youth governor meeting something. Okay. will make into the top three because at some point um, East Valley is going to come to a conclusion which um, delegate has a better chance and I think they're going to decide with Maddie over Thomas. He's prepared for this role but I don't think out of what has happened um, I don't think he stood out in any way. Like, his video was not good. The lip singing was did not match at all. Probably like the, the Iron Air. Okay. Um, if I would have to choose two people that would go through, probably be... I don't know, this is so hard. Honestly, probably... So they were just hard to win. I liked Emma's speech. I thought she did really well. Probably a tie between Emma and Sochi, maybe? I don't know. There's no clear front runner. Like, this like whole race has been it's up in the air until something happens. So. There's talk to people in that Yeah, Jack, I just spread the word. Like, well, uh, yesterday, you know, in joint session, everyone kind of choked their speeches, but Zach pulled through. He had a, you know, strong voice. So I think it's, in the end, it's going to be up to Zach versus Andres, but Zach will pull it out. Zach's going to win. Thomas Schramm is going to do pretty well. Uh, Emma Barossa. Sochi, I think we'll do well. What'd she say? Start on the bus one or bus two. Clear out the way. I'm going to pull that boppers. Tell them give me toppers. You did beat the line. I'm like... We need a shark. I think my two probably biggest competitors are Sochi and Andre. So... Really love him. I hope he wins. And he's really cute. Look at his up. Look how cute! Look how cute he is! And the bonus is not fire. Dude! Yeah. Debate. I know. <laughs> what's your, what's your, your, your biggest part of your platform that you want to get across? Um, probably how YMG can help the environment and like be more sustainable using less paper. Are you nervous though? Honestly, not really. Do you guys think if Andre wasn't in Trout, he'd have a better chance? I'm running with the Poppy Party to serve as your 73rd 
Times Governor. We are all entitled to our own opinions, but not to our own facts. The recent rise of blatant misinformation threatens the very foundation of our democracy. Huge oil companies like ExxonMobil want you to believe that climate change is a hoax and that relying on fossil fuels is sustainable. They spend billions of dollars spreading made-up statistics to further their industry, ignoring the severe warning of scientists everywhere that our Earth will suffer irreparable damage if we do not act immediately. Many lawmakers insist that migrants coming in caravans from Central America who are seeking asylum are actually terrorists attempting to invade our country, and they use that as an excuse to deny them basic human rights. Many anti-choice advocates claim fetuses can be ripped out of, the, out of the womb moments before birth for no reason, when in reality, 99% of abortions are not late term, and those that are, occur only because of dire health concerns for the mother or fetus. Well, there have always been false claims in our politics. The participation of government officials in major news outlets is a dangerous trend. We can disagree about how to best combat climate change, but we cannot deny that it is real. We can disagree about the best way to fix our broken immigration system, but we cannot characterize all migrants as dangerous. We can disagree on issues relating to abortion, but we cannot assert that legal abortion means a woman can impulsively terminate her pregnancy right before her due date. Our leaders may be willing to spread inaccuracies to further their causes, but we must not allow that because our democracy and our future depend on it. Now, let us begin with questions that have been crafted by me personally, the Secretary of State, and my office related to matters that affect the state. Uh, for all the candidates, please use the mics that are present at, uh, or, or past the round, the, the, the green mics right there. Yeah. Our is for Maddie and Thomas. What does it mean? What does it mean to have power? And why do you desire it? <laughs> I like this question. So, power is something that if you really think about and you think about it. When it comes to position like you governor, it is less than being the leader of all of you rather than being the voice for all of you. And what that means is we need to make sure that you think our fit is formed into a program that supports what all the delegates want. That is why it's a huge part of my platform to make sure that we are making YMG accessible. That means creating mentorship programs that are going to allow for uh, past leadership people to then mentor future candidates, allowing for smaller delegations to have the same advantage of having people involved. Thank you. Hey everyone. Power is the ability to implement change that others want, not the change that you want. So one of the platform ideas that I want to implement in the program is to allow caucuses to actually nominate candidates for positions of power throughout youth government. So often, they're not heard without our program, and they deserve a voice. If they have a candidate up on the stage running for youth governor, they have a direct voice to the entire program. We need to implement this policy in order to support our caucuses all across the program. Thank you. What makes you passionate about it? I worked incredibly hard with my regular party and we developed three major planks that we all focus on. Number one, climate change as a free by speech. Number two, health care as a Medicare for all. And number three, uh, fiscal responsibility. That means I currently don't know how to file my taxes because a lot of our classes that we learn don't teach us the basic things that we need as an adult. So when I sit down with Governor Newsom as your 73rd governor, these three planks up first because ultimately we will learn and we will voice our opinions so that way the actual government realizes what we need as this generation. Thank you very much. What makes me so passionate about my links is that it's supported by the delegates that I speak to. Every delegate I talk to inspires me when I when I think about my full and program area, which will ask all of you what issues will that matter the most to you and how you want to address them. Similarly, my caucus campaign is an initiative that will allow every single caucus to give one bill to ledge houses, one proposal to NIC, and one constitutional amendment to SponCon. This is a policy that will allow caucuses and minority delegates to have their opinions and their beliefs be felt throughout the entire program of YMG, and that's what makes me so passionate about my place. What are the candidates 
stances on issues like the controlled immigration of migrants into California. Our current system of uh, regulating immigration is not working. Keeping children in camps and not giving people proper trials, it's awful. And people that are trying to seek asylum coming into America and California, they're being
experience I've had in this campaign in the past six months has been absolutely amazing. And I just want to say to all you board delegates out there, enjoy your time in the program. To all you sophomore delegates out there, I hope you embark on the same journey that the six of us have over the past few months. And for the final time this conference, who's your man? Thank you. I'm actually gonna say exactly what Andre is gonna say. You guys have the coolest view ever. Like you can literally see all of us. Is this working? Go without it. Uh, is there anything that you would want to I think just talking to the most amount of people possible. Sometimes it's really hard. Um, people seem occupied, but I think that's the biggest thing that I would do. Just talking to people, hearing what you guys have to say. I've been trying to do it, but there's always time to talk to more people because that's the biggest thing that I think we can all do as candidates. Yes. Hello everyone, my name is Emma Barroso. Yes. In certain scenarios sometimes, but I think we just need to focus on racism right now. Yes. What yeah. scenarios? <laughs> what scenarios are So, I, I personally go to at the Asian school uh, with a lot of Latinos and then Asians. And so a lot of times I'm considered a white girl, even though I'm not, I'm Latina. Um, but a lot of times I'm categorized as white and I'm, I'm categorized in that situation. And a lot of times I'm really not, I'm, they're, they're discriminating against my race. And those times it does occur. However, it's so much more prominent within people of color. So we need to focus on that more. Hi, my name is Nicole Madison from the Polar Moms Family Wives. Yes. Video of you saying like about like, about, like that's not 
true. Did you ever say that no. performance is a scene, right? Yeah. You stop, please. All right, so apparently CPY is circulating a video about Zach Apt um, saying terrible things about women and how women need men to rule over them. And I just want to say that that's completely false. Zach would never seriously say anything like that. He is a kind-hearted guy, and I, there's no like evil in his heart to say that. Um, and it's very unfortunate that this is going around. Uh, especially when voting is open, I personally think that this, they made it up. I don't understand how this could happen. Yeah. What? Were you just I was just on the phone with Solomon. There's this girl out here saying hearsay about my boy Zach App. Her name is Perma, bro Perma. I don't know what delegation she is in or anything like that, but she's threatening to derail Zach App's career. Yeah, I don't really know what to say to you guys. Like, the amount of support I've got this weekend from all of you guys. It's like people coming up to me and telling me, I, I forget who exactly, but people literally told me that they're in the bathroom and just talking to random people while they're in the stall. <laughs> it's just so random, but like everyone who campaigned for me, everyone who talked about me, everyone who did anything, I really I appreciate it so much. It's really hard to put into words, but like it means a lot. And like Max said, regardless of what happens, um, I appreciate all of you guys. This is a testament to you guys. If we lose, then it's a testament to me, but if we win, then it's about you guys. <laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah, last night Team 2 were heading to the bus, just voted for Zach Apt, feeling good about his chances. gonna get elected or not. Wow. Hey guys, I'm Zach. I'm running for youth governor with the Poppy Party. And I'm from the Collins and Katz Family YMCA. I just want to thank all of you sincerely. I never thought that at the start of this I'd have so many people come up to me and scream pop pop in my face. Not in an annoying way, but in an awesome way that you guys are just so supportive. Andre, how are you feeling? I am feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling at peace because I know there's nothing else I can do. But the closer it gets, the more and more, more and more anxious I'm getting yeah. as well. So. Did you see the polls? I did see the polls. It's very close. Yeah, real, real close. Except for, <laughs> except for Thomas uh, Ram with 50 percent, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, Questions that were literally like, oh do you take sh your shoes off on the airplane? Zach Epp goes, no. They boo him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ask him they, I got like, everything wrong. Go cereal first. He goes cereal. They go boo. Like they literally were so. <laughs> Is that it? 72nd, Secretary of State, the Honorable Nate by Mal, with the results of this weekend's elections. I would now like to invite the Honorable Aiden Blaine to the stage to announce, to announce the three finalists for 73rd Youth Governor that will be moving on to Sacramento. So the moment you've all waited for, your top three candidates.
for 73rd Youth Governor who will be moving on to Sacramento. The first candidate from the Trout Party, Andre Merzion. Your next candidate from the Gold Party, Tommy Schreck. And the final candidate moving on to Sacramento. from the Avocado Party, Maddie So, we'd have to discuss who we want to endorse with coffee. Okay. I don't know if it's not for anyone. But we have, we have, That's right not fun. right now we have, Thomas is not an option. We're not gonna, That's not true. No, that's we're not, not going to endorse Thomas. No, we might. Because. Andre, Andre is literally a zero option. Yeah. I think, I think Thomas is like, just trying to be nice and like, give me time. Yeah. Because they both reached out like, pretty soon. Yeah. I which, like, which, like, I don't really mind, but, like, I could, I, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have reached out as fast. I thought it was a little too soon, Maddie texting you like on the bus back asking you to be on your campaign Yeah. I thought that was like definitely too soon. Um, Maddie has DM's copy party asking for an endorsement, and the, yeah, DM, the DM was very like, very much just going after like, she knew exactly what to say. What she said? I don't know, I haven't seen it. Andre's not an option, he's too conservative to endorse. But we don't know that. What did he say that made you Did you not hear what he was saying, his pro choice answer? I'm pro-choice, but I believe that we should be educating people on abortion because we can't, you can't even buy Plan B until you're 18, and that's ridiculous. I, I could have said that. No, if, if you said that, you would have, someone would have thought you were, like, pro-life. No, I don't yeah, think exactly. That's the answer well, conservative gives. I don't have life. Right, okay, but he said, he said he wants to listen, he <laughs> wants to filter his ideas for me, and, like, let me edit his speeches, and, like, let me walk around with him and, like, tell him what to say. So I can make him seem not conservative. But and the that, point isn't what he's saying, the point is what he is. I don't think he is. You can't support a candidate that like we so strongly disagree with. So I don't so strongly disagree with but his speech. Okay, if I if we endorse him and I edit his speeches and I monitor what he says and he mentions something like very liberal in his speech and shows that he's liberal in his speech, then I don't like start the, the conference. I don't like the game. The game I don't does not make it, Andre seem more liberal. I don't, point is to endorse, to endorse the candidate that we most support. Well, I don't, I don't, feel, I don't, I don't know how to I need their stances on policy. Okay, so we can talk about them, but can we put the Andre thing aside for now? Because if we can at least pick between Maddie and Thomas and then have a debate over them two versus Andre because it's not anything about their self. Can we do that? Uh, I, if, if it's between Thomas and Maddie, I I think Thomas. I, like, I want to feel like I'm do like helping. I'm not helping. Would you rather help a campaign that would have won without your help, or help a losing campaign? Help a losing campaign. Or help a campaign you most support. Uh, no, regardless of which of those they, two. They don't. They really don't stand for anything that strongly that I can tell. None of them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, good. Uh, Andre, you love Andre. I know. You honestly love him. I love Andre. 
So, Andre? I don't, it's not up to me though. Liza would never get on board. Fire Liza. Also, because I don't know what I would tell Maddie. Bye. Bye bye. Oh, so Andre texted me and asked if he could visit, and I said, I said, yeah, because. I wasn't quite sure, and he said that he checked in and made sure that it was all right. And I said that's fine by me. So Andre came. Supporting Andre in Sacramento? Uh, I'm gonna do what the party decides to do. Whatever direction they decide to go, I'm gonna support them. It's why, like, I don't it's, know who to make my really campaign manager. It's really complicated. Who's Not the, really. He's got like a team. I don't know. Well, you could be my point? campaign manager if you want to. <laughs> Job floor is open or you, sure. Zoe. Happy birthday. You know, that's, that's my gift Thank to you. you so doing birthday, more girl. work for my I campaign. I couldn't have asked for more, honestly. Aww. I'm just a YNG delegate here, yeah. Who are you gonna be helping out? Uh, whoever, whoever Poppy decides. We're just helping everyone right now. I've actually been having a lot of fun. Like, I, I wish I won, but we're still having fun. Who are you most hopeful that they'll win? I don't know. I honestly don't. I think Thomas is. I think they're all doing well. Thomas probably has the most momentum, I'd say, but I don't know. Anything can happen. All right. Uh, I would like to call this VIP Day joint session of the 72nd California YMCA Youth and Government Model Legislature in Court to order. We'll hear from the candidates for the 72nd Youth Governor. Each candidate will have two minutes for their remarks. Following the speeches, candidates will have an opportunity to answer questions. So, I would now like to call forward three of the finalists for youth governor to the left. In the past, I've talked to you about promises, but let's change the narrative. We don't need candidates giving the same speeches year after year. We need candidates on the stage dedicated to changing the thing they have the single greatest impact on. This program. You will understand when you're older. One day you can do great things. Let the adults talk now. realistic, but we must aim high, dream big, and 
set the bar for what can be accomplished when the youth comes together. Still, as California delegates, we must recognize the flaws in our system. The system that keeps small delegations powerless. The system that makes you choose between a lunch and a caucus meeting. The system that limits our freedom of expression and the system so powerful that two of the three youth governor candidates come not from the same cluster, but the same delegation. see with issues and activism, and what changes can you promise to protect the rights of delegates to organize? Currently in INA, a lot of delegates don't feel represented by their party. I think in the future, we should abolish INA. I know it's kind of crazy, but this program has caused so many problems, so many forms of division for us, which is unfortunate because this program is all about bringing people together. I think INA has a lot of power, and that's something that we see because it's a direct connection between youth and government and activism outside, um, giving us the power to actually facilitate change in Sacramento in our own communities. If candidates are running in their parties, not based off of their delegations, but based off of their political ideologies, that's going to help smaller delegations. I absolutely agree with the issues and activism part of INA. INA is amazing. <laughs> we can't change the system and tweak it to better serve the wants of the delegates. The delegate has no opinion on who they wish to vote for, how would you push a delegate to vote rather than abstain? If you don't care about a candidate, actually find the issues they're passionate about and see which candidate aligns with them. Because if you find a collective goal, a, find a collective passion, you can use that to your advantage. I think the best thing we can do is, is extend the voting period. So rather than it just being a couple hours where you're forced to find a candidate, you can have more time to really get to know those candidates. It's going to allow for people to be more educated about who they're voting for. And if you're more educated, you are more likely to vote. So there's an inherent problem with this question in and of itself. And that, that, that is that 
Well, what if a delegate does not care whatsoever about who he's voting for? We all have a responsibility to reach out to delegates who couldn't care less about traditional issues. I mean, this is something I talked about earlier. Just because a policy affects such a small amount of people doesn't mean that you shouldn't pursue it. So we all have big crushes on Andre here. Yeah, big crush, big crush. Crushing on Andre? I am, I am, I am crushing on Andre. I think he's really something else. I'm encouraging all voters to really have an open mind and consider who they think is going to be the best for the program because this election is about how we can make the future. Zach Aft is voting for... <laughs>
Andre just won yesterday. That was exciting, uh, and I'm excited to see him. Once our A boarding group is fully boarded, we'll board any passengers who have the next tier extra time. Um, I think I ran for a couple different reasons. A couple just for myself. I wanted to prove that I could be up on the stage and I felt like before I left youth and government, before I left high school, um, I wanted to have that experience of being on stage and speaking to all those people and just proving to myself that um, I could do something that seems so crazy and just make it a reality. Uh, but also within the program it gave me so much and I wanted to make a lot of changes within the program and I think that running for youth governor was the best way, even if I didn't win, just to make those issues prominent. And I, it's encouraging to see people talking about some of the things that I ran on. So even if I'm not winning, even if I didn't win, some of those things are still gonna be changed. I don't know if I would have endorsed Andre. I guess hindsight is 2020. So if I would have known that he, he was gonna win, then maybe. But I also, I, I don't regret how my Sacramento went and I don't uh, regret how I handled the situation because all three of them were good friends of mine and I would have felt a little bad endorsing one of them over the other 
So if I had to do it over again, I I'd, I'd still think I would have played it out the same way that I did. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do, maybe be on GovCab, um, but also I think it would be nice to just take a step back and enjoy the program with my friends. I think like realizing what I wanted to do next year and um, seeing like how what I learned would fit best with what position. And I think Vice President was kind of obvious just with my experience. Uh, uh, the next Vice President for Westside is Zach App. I've just been chilling, reflecting on the past year and all the friends I've made and experience I've gained. I just think it's really cool how many friends I have statewide and stuff. So, when someone asks you what YNG is, how do you describe it? Do you tell them that it's this model legislature core program with over 3,000 delegates coming together to do what the real government does? Is that really what you think government means to us? That's what it is on the surface, but there's so much more underneath that you'll never be able to truly understand. Do you experience youth in government for yourself? Being a youth in government delegate means so much more than just your position or program area. Action. Got to do it pretty soon For fear of aerial warfare Right here in your room Switch on Start negotiations Off. Baby, baby, I love you so.